for most people, the second biggest purchase they make is their car. And for a lot of people, that can be a little bit intimidating. There are two companies, however, whose mission it is to make that process a whole lot easier. And I bought a car from both of them to see what the difference was. This is the most expensive video I have ever made. Before I continue, I have to state publicly that uh, this in no way or shape or form was sponsored by either of the companies, nor have any of the companies had any involvement in the creative process of it. It's based entirely on my own raw experience. So let's get on with the video. Our story begins when Michaela picked out her car, the Fiat 500L from Carvana. I, myself, a few months ago picked out the Fiat 500X from CarMax. Now, both of these companies had a decent selection of cars to choose from, with the option of having certain vehicles shipped from other locations uh, across the country. Though the further that location is, the higher the shipping fee would be. Though both of us had our cars shipped from out of state and had free shipping because it wasn't too far. We live in the Atlanta area, so my car came from Nashville and Michaela's car came from somewhere in Kentucky. Kentucky's kind of all the same to me. So they do allow a decent distance to go before they start charging you a shipping fee. Which I have to say is pretty reasonable considering it's gotta be a decent price to have to ship these things. So if you see a car that you like that's a decent distance away, I'd be pretty certain that you want it before you actually have them ship it for you. So let's get back to the experience at both companies. So Carvana, being the newer company, has about 24 locations nationwide of their car vending machines, which at the time of checking in the research for this video, they had about 13,873 cars in stock. It's a much newer company than CarMax, and it was founded in late 2012 by Ernest Garcia the third. It's based out of Tempe, Arizona. I think I said that right. It really didn't take them long at all to rise in popularity. Their entire business model is based off simplicity. And seriously, it is the easiest way to buy a car. My wife sat on the couch, made an account, found the car she loved, and reserved it. And then it took a couple of days to arrive at the Atlanta location. And we opted to drive and pick it up at a location instead of having it delivered to us because we live in, at the time, we lived in a little bit more of a rural area and figured it might just be easier to go and pick it up. And it kind of gives us a little bit more of what the experience is in person to, I don't know, how they display it and whatnot. Having it dumped on your curb can be convenient, but it definitely takes some of the magic away. I'm glad that we did because when we showed up, they had it front and center displayed right in front of the door or window, or I mean, you can see it right here. And man, did it look good. It looked like a piece of candy in the showroom. Piece of candy from heaven. So once we went inside, we got to examine it a little bit closer and see that it was in basically perfect condition. It was pretty impressive. See, Carvana prides themselves on having a very, very strict criteria on what is acceptable uh, as a used car. They go through a very vigorous process inspecting it internally as well as externally. And at the car being at 63,000 miles, it looked next to new. They even went so far as to mail us new mats for the inside of the car because the old ones didn't meet their standards. Why they didn't take care of that in the original uh, inspection, I'm not sure, but not gonna complain. Once we approved of the car, it was time to sign. And there was like, literally one dude in the whole place who basically just act as like a key holder and like a person to hand us the papers. He's basically like the gatekeeper. So, you know, introverts rejoice. And I'm really not exaggerating when I say how simple it was. I think all total, it was about seven minutes of signing and then we were free to take it. And they didn't even require like one cent up front. They just handed us the keys and that was that. Michaela had her new car, a truly happy ending. Now for my experience at CarMax. I could be a bit obsessive when it comes to shopping for things, let alone a car. I always try to find something in the best deal I can when I find something within my options. And I spent many days checking inventory on both CarMax and Carvana until I found an awesome deal on a Fiat 500X. It was the 2016 lounge model with these really nice brown leather seats. Originally, the car went for somewhere around $28,000, but just four years ago, and CarMax was selling it for $13,999. And the kicker was that it only had 32,000 miles on it. So it was basically new at half its original price, which seemed like a pretty awesome deal to me. This was the one. So I claimed it online and had it shipped free from Tennessee in just a few days for free. Once it arrived at the Roswell location, I drove over for my test drive. 
and this is where the experience between CarMax and Carvana started to differ a little bit. Once I arrived at the location, I entered the lot to find hundreds of cars to sort of browse and look around at. This is a different type of experience for a more traditional shopper when they kind of want to actually see things firsthand. So while I waited for a sales rep to assist me, I was free to browse the lot and just kind of look at and see what they had. And I definitely think that there's some people that actually really need that. And for me personally, it reaffirmed my decision to go with the Fiat. Once I had the sales rep help me, he gave me the keys and I was free to take it for a test drive and, you know, drive it around and see how I felt about it. And so I drove it, liked it, and once I came back, I told him that I would be back the next day to complete the sale because I still had my old car I had to get rid of. Once I came back, it was time to sign some stuff. And it was a bit more stuff to sign than Carvana. I think in total, the signing took somewhere from around 45 minutes to about an hour, which is obviously quite a bit longer than Carvana. But for such a big purchase, I think doing that once isn't that big of a deal. The paperwork had to go through a few more hands and there were times I kind of just had to wait around for those hands to uh, receive the papers and, you know, copy stuff and whatever. But also to be fair, this was right at the beginning of the COVID outbreak, so uh, there was a lot more due process and space that was needed, so I'm going to give that to them. But through the whole process, everyone was really helpful, nice, and courteous. I think that the reason that there was more paperwork is due to the reason that the company is just a little bit older. They've been around since 1993, so they're as old as me. So for that amount of time to happen, you know, more stuff comes up and there becomes more reason to have more paperwork because people, I don't know, do things. So it kind of makes more sense that more paperwork was necessary. So anyway, once it was signed, it was time for me to accept the keys and drive off. So I went outside with the rep and waited as they did one final cleaning to the car uh, before I would take it away. And around the corner, it came with a big old yellow bow on top. Sadly, I was not allowed to keep the bow. I guess it was just for presentation and photo ops or whatever. So, you know, I took my picture and it looked good. So it was only then that I told my sales rep about my plans to make the video that you're, you know, watching now. And he was super cool with it. And here's another similarity that they have to Carvana is that there was absolutely no money up front except for the uh, down payment that I chose to uh, put down. I don't know how else you're supposed to express that. My first actual car payment wasn't going to be until 45 days later. And those payments would be equal car payments until the remainder of the loan. There wouldn't be like any uh, ups or downs or anything like that. And what they do is that they take the tax title and registration and just lump it into the entire cost of the car so that they can break it down into those even payments. It just makes it a little bit simpler. Now this is where it might vary between different states depending on what the laws are for you know how you go about getting your title and registration. So that may change from different states. But in Georgia, that's how it went down here. After a few days, uh, CarMax sent me my license plate, or had the state send me my license plate. I forget which. I think it was the state. The state sent it to me. And I had temporary plates until then. But for Carvana, for some reason, it was a little bit different. They basically gave us a check to go pay the state, uh, or refund us our money, or however you want to uh, word that. But basically, we had to go and get the title, I mean, go get the tags ourselves, which I don't understand why, because we registered both cars in the same county. So I, I don't know why it would be different in that regard, but that's what happened in our experience. Now I guess it's time to make the direct comparison. Carvana was all in all probably the simplest of process. They truly made it as automated and direct as possible. CarMax, while still simple, was a little bit more traditional, and I had to go through a bit more paperwork and had to deal with a few more people in the whole process. Again, I'm guessing that's because it's a more mature company and they've accumulated more and more reasons over the years to need more agreements from you. Carvana has a great selection online, but don't expect much window shopping in person. If you already know exactly what car you want, that's fine. But you also only get about three seven day trials with a car that you pick out uh, before they cut you off. So for the more indecisive ones, I'd beware. And this is where CarMax truly shines. With many more locations and actual physical lots that you can explore and check out all the different cars they have on hand, it's a much more explorative experience, even if it is at the cost of a more magical experience. 
I mean, Carvana is littered with them. I mean, if you go to one of the actual vending machine locations, they give you this big old coin that you pop into a slot and then they lower your car down for you. It's, yeah, I mean, it's quite the experience. Now, as far as I could tell, the pricing between the two companies was actually very comparable. And the pricing is actually pretty good, even though at first glance it might not seem so. But don't forget, they also have like a very strict process of picking out which cars they will actually accept. And they go through a lot of inspections and repair anything that might not that might need to be done to these cars. And at the end of the day, they don't add on any dealer fees or hidden costs. So what you see with the price is what you get. And some of these things may end up affecting the total APR at the end of the day. Now the APR is what's a little bit higher than what you might be comfortable with. So let's break that down. For my car, it, I got about a 8.5% APR, which is a little high when it comes to loans for cars, but Michaela's from Carvana was a 10.5. So that was a little bit higher and CarMax kind of takes the win in that regard. But if you don't have any experience in getting car loans or financing in any uh, items that are that big, or if you have a lower credit, that's really what you're gonna get. And it's a pretty easy process to get. Now, if you've had a good credit, if you have good credit, have a good credit union you've belonged to for the past like decade or something, you can by all means bring your own loan over uh, if you can get a better APR and still experience CarMax and Carvana in all their glory. So if you can get your own better loan, feel free to bring that over. But if you do use CarMax or Carvana as your lender, that process is pretty simple. You just pick whatever your down payment is or none at all if you don't have that kind of cash on you. And then they uh, basically don't ask for a payment for 45 days and you're good to go. And both of them were like nearly identical in that regard. And so far we've been enjoying both of our cars for the past few months now with really no hiccups. All in all, in the end, I really have no problems recommending both companies to just about anyone. I really think it depends on what your tastes are and your style and how you like to shop. Their no game straightforward process is a real treat to deal with. And both my wife and I were the ideal candidates for both companies. Michaela knew exactly what car she wanted and could get it with the least amount of interference from Carvana. And for me, I like to shop around a little bit and look at all my options before deciding. So CarMax was great for that. Carvana definitely has a little bit of a younger feel to it, but at the same time, they took a lot of their ideas from CarMax. I wouldn't say that one company is necessarily better than the other. Carvana does offer affiliate codes that they give you into this little card box uh, that uh, give you $100 back for any car that someone else purchases through Carvana. And that person gets $500 off the car they buy. So that's a, that's a pretty good discount. So I will be leaving a code, an affiliate code down below. I'm not really sure how to go about it because they kind of give you like individual codes. So I guess if one gets used up, then I'll replace it. I don't know. I don't really know the best way to go about this, but uh, if that one's used up, you can message me or I don't know, I'll put new ones in. We'll figure this out, but I can get you $500 off your car. So don't say I haven't done anything for you. And CarMax, however, uh, well, they don't do that yet. So hopefully they change that. As for this video, that just about wraps everything up. So thank you for watching and uh, yeah, okay, bye.